Australia. I don't know how the whole grand spectrum, how it falls into the United Kingdom, but hey, man, he's out here putting in work and already with 37%. I'm sorry, 30 to Wadi. Yeah. I mean, just in general, I feel like we're not going to be seeing too many sets from him from out-of-state players, so it's really good to be able to showcase Australian talent here today. Yeah. He recently did get first at one of the big Australian regionals that they had over there, so yeah. real opportunity to showcase Australian talent. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wadi so far. Let's see if Wadi can pick up the pace or not, because this Ness is moving right now with exactly. those PSI Magnet cancels. He's really good at using PSI Magnet cancels. I got a chance to play friendlies with him, um, obviously off-stream for a while, and the one thing I like is he's a little different from Bo. Uh, in, in his moveset, he uses a little more PK Fire Heavy because he likes those confirms and he likes that raw damage you can get off of PK Fire. If you're not careful with the spacing and the timing that they might throw out PK Fire, you will get caught and you'll take damage. Yeah. And it looks like just in general, Luko is very good at controlling the space that Wadi wants to try to occupy mm -hmm. using the gyro, using the laser. He's able to parry, he's able to use hitboxes to take away the mag or to take away the gyro when he wants. And he's able to grab them whenever he can, whenever he knows Wadi is trying to take control of it. So he's doing oh. an amazing job of keeping uh, pace of the match, which is exactly what Ness especially wants to do. And especially oh, what you want to deny from Rob. I like the fact that Wadi's gonna cover that ledge play because he knew he was gonna go for the ledge and use that great aerial mo movement from the directional air dodge and he wanted to cover that with a consistent hitbox that was Rob Cyclone. So it's really good for him to cover it. Like you mentioned, man, he's good at, so good at controlling the space, but how good is he at taking the stocks? You already saw him go for a failed um, ledge jump or even a ledge back air, right? Because he knew he wanted to go for the test. Oh, here's a big, oh no, I'm about to say, he let it go. He's running out of gas though. Yeah. Still gonna get clipped by that up air. Not quite enough to still take the stop. Yeah. Shout out to Mena RD yesterday. If you guys actually were able to catch Jenga, he mentioned how <laughs> Rob Mains love to abuse gas, even if they're so low out of it. And Wadi definitely abused the gas to make sure he was gonna survive just a bit longer against Luko. Yeah. Right now, it's just a, it was a big situation of who's gonna get that grab first. Wadi gonna seal it out with the up throw, but Luko still got an opportunity. He just needs one back throw, even from center stage. Pretty sure he'll be able to kill. Just takes him off the top. Yeah. But it's a matter of being able to come in. Now it looks like he's getting a little bit more obvious what his game plan is, trying to occupy that space. If you're not quite seeing that patient game from early and all of a sudden, his stock might be gone, but finally that Nair from the ledge finally going to take it. Only 66%. Ness can make that up in a jiffy. And, and if you look at that error where he had, that critical error, is it all got hit from the Rob Laser. He tried to go for PK Thunder in the carry, which can actually carry you to the Blast Zone if you just graze your opponent and carry them in a, in a snake motion. You can actually just kill your opponents like that. Oh, this is a low recovery, and unfortunately he lost sight of the PK Thunder. Yeah. But just going back to that, he took percent from that, so now we're starting to see Luko use less PK Thunder because he knows that's how Wadi stopping me. He's stopping me from going for that play. He just lost his double jump. Getting sniped by the gyros a little bit more often now. I feel like Wadi, now that he has a lead, he's taking back control of the pace of the match. Before, when it was even stocks, it was any second now. Oh. This Ness could easily take the lead, and then all of a sudden, my game plan is going to be a lot harder. Yeah. That's the that's the double-edged sword that you do when you fight a projectile character. You got the lead, great, just run with it. If you don't, then you got to catch <laughs> up. But it looks like Luko's the one that has to do the catching up right now, so it's working beautifully for him right now. Another double jump has oh, been sniped. It. Not going to be able to get the meteor, but on the second opportunity, not going to get him on the ledge either that second time. Yeah, second time was not the charm here, but immediately Luke gets back on the stage. That armor from the PK Thunder, he was able to just power through. This is a strong hitbox, a lot of neutral airs, but immediately Luko understands. I'm in the air, but Wadi covers the ground. That's why he has that gyro always consistently in play, and he always tries to make sure when I'm on the ground, he's got the projectiles out there. Once again, he got caught by the Rob Laser, man. He's been going for the PK Thunder, and that's something that Wadi has been covering every single time. So Luko has lost a tool that he was so used to using that it's now out of play. I like that little dare, just stalled himself in the air, made sure, oh, oh sniped right oh. out of there. Luko gonna be losing that first game with a two stock, but Wadi, like I said before, it was even on the first stock, but then once he got the lead, all of a sudden Luko said, okay, I gotta try and bring this back before yeah. the lead deficit gets too big. But it just didn't quite happen. Luko wasn't able to close it out, even with a character like Nessa has a lot of options to be able to seal out stocks. Yeah. And of course, if you're wondering, the two people in the background, that of course is Senpai, what is love, and of course, the man right next to Simpai is actually Chef. He actually organized the entire payment for Luca to make it out here for this event. So shout outs to him and all the work he's done out there in Australia. Um, I spoke to him a little bit. If you guys remember Switchfest, I'll give you guys a little bit of a flashback there. True 4 was staying in Australia previously for a while. He's from Germany, so that was the Shulk main alongside a player like Nico. But let's go right into the next game, Sedge. I'm liking the space that Luca was able to control, but Wadi has adapted. 
let's see, Smashville is a bit of a smaller space. I can see that Luko might want to be able to uh, get more in Wadi's face, but we'll have to see because right now Wadi's the one in Luko's face, already putting him at the ledge, and just with the ledge traps with the Nairs, the Nairs just getting outranged by the, the Rockets, man. Yeah, man, those boosters really hurt. The PK fire just to make sure he comes back on the stage. Safe passage, but it doesn't feel so safe when you're still out there. And with the percent that you've been taking, it's going to be pretty pretty big curtains if Wadi just keeps you at the ledge. So good at last driving back, though, just to get him off there. Whose swap does this belong to? Wadi immediately just tries to capitalize with the down arrow. So close to a two frame, though. All right, now Luko's opportunity, but how does Wadi recover? He has enough fuel, <laughs> he just mixes it up. Yeah, then you're just going to see that all the time. Just being able to mix up how much you tap the B button and how rise you how high you rise, and that's going to be a big deciding factor. Oh, no. They're going to get clipped there, but yeah. uh, it's still a guaranteed stock. The Wadi going to pretty much take only 58% that first stock, and the PK Thunder 2 not quite going to work. He already hit the ground before uh, anything could happen. Yeah, and even then, Wadi had enough shield to actually be able to survive that. Oh, shield stand off with no grab, no commitment from Luko. He's not trying to grab the gyro. Yeah, still using a laser, just keeping up that space. And the down tilt, he finally gets a trip, and I like that the reaction out of it. And he's still able to cover that horizontal space with the side B, but not able to get the meteor to close oh. it off. He's so good with the side magnet stalls, but the problem that you mentioned earlier, right, is Wadi is so good at understanding the fact that Luka wants the control space. So every time he comes with a side magnet stall, Wadi's extra cautious to stop him from being in the air for too long. That's why we don't see Luka going for many side stalls anymore. Here's the side B on the ledge, able to take the stock. I really appreciate the attempts from Luko to try and end that stock, try to bring it back around. But Wadi just so good at the recovery, he made it back, and he was able to get um, a decent amount of damage against him. Back throw yet again. Wadi will make sure he uses that gyro to force Luko to go for a horizontal recovery. PK Thunder and no tech. He lost the thing. He was frustrated. It, it's frustrating. It's a frustrating thing to fight a character like Rob because you're you're facing so much, right? You have so many projectiles in in play. But of course, we mentioned earlier, round robin, best of five. Here we go. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see. Now we're going into our third game potentially. I don't know if Wadi's just gonna finish sweeping the floor with Luko or if he's gonna bring something back because uh, that last game it definitely showed that Wadi was more in control of that match, even more so. And that's the thing about playing a high level player versus a top level player. You, the, your first game might be really, really close mm -hmm. or even the first stock, but then afterwards, the top player usually adapts much faster. That's not to discredit Luko by any means. He's still a fantastic player, but just someone as seasoned as and has as much experience as Wadi, it's hard right. to crack the code against a character like that. Exactly. I think some of these. That's why I'm so excited about Round Robin. I know it's got a bit of a stigma in the community. Like, why do we even bother with Round Robin? But to be honest, it's a great way to showcase talent that we don't get to see so often in a competitive set. Yeah. And when it comes to the world stage, things are very different. That down air feels very different for Luko, as opposed to being here from MBDA's finest against, you know, probably one of somebody from Australia. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate. Uh, just a really close PK Thunder to the oh. ledge, and Wadi was looking very close at it. Oh, gonna clip that jump. Will he snipe it out again? Not quite gonna be able to survive, but still, Wadi barely taking a percent on. Luka gotta make something happen, but that's a big opportunity with the dash attack. Now he's got the ledge control. Let's see what he can try to do with it. Oh, he tries to space himself, but Wadi merely knows he has to come in with the forward air. A little bit more of a disjoint there. <laughs> it all came down to how Wadi was able to play that, right? The pressure he did on the shield at the corner, he was able to just make sure that pop that bubble was gonna pop. Yeah, it was just kind of difficult because I feel like that Rob Fair, I mean, is utilized a lot, but I feel like it's one of the underrated ones. Everyone talks about the gyro, the up air, the down throw. But right. that move is such a good out of shield option and a get off me tool. It's just all of a sudden it comes out so fast and you're not expecting it. Yeah. And that's exactly how he's using it against Luko right now. Clipping on another jump, gonna try and snipe him. The directional oh, air no, dodge comes out, low. he comes out too low. And that's gonna be another stock, potentially a double three stock coming from Wadi here. It's such a momentum killer for Luko, especially because when your opponent has the entire board all in their base, it's really hard. We are all your base, and Wadi is all in Luko's base, and he's not able to get a stock. All right, let's see. Okay, the platform gonna just bounce the laser by accident. Get some recovery with the laser. Let's see how he does the recovery, though. But yeah, just like in Smash 4, use the up air to cover the ground above you, just so you don't get meteor. The jab block oh, comes in into the F smash. Solid jab block reset, able to use the side magnet to have that win box, send the gyroid back, 
survive a little bit longer. Here's Luka's uh, potential offstage play, but I like the fact that he's kind of feeling a little bit burnt up with how much damage he's been taking from Wadi. Finally, that back air pays off, though. Yeah, after so many tries, finally going to be able to get that edge guard. Oh, try to use the gyro to intercept him, delay the hitbox, and then go, go in with the side B. Not quite going to be able to work out there, though, but still, Wadi in the control here, uses that double jump to get away from oh. the gyro, and just like that, clean as can be, Wadi takes the stock and moves on with a three. Yeah, three, uh, man, I hate to say it, man, but the 30 and the fist bumps and handshakes is all you got with a 30 on top. So that takes some really damage, but I mean, Wadi, Wadi is a vet, even in the, even from the brawl days, right? Like I